Hello, Empowered Women's Circle. So glad to be with you today. Everyone say hi to Marcia. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) So we're so glad to be with you guys today. And we're going to be kind of doing our sort of what we got out of the Anna Cancer book. I can't believe we're already to the end of the book. So we're going to kind of go through what we each kind of took away from it. And then we have a really cool tool for you all to use moving forward for the areas that we're going to be discussing today. So our chapters were about um, food and moving the body, which of course for Marcy and I are the absolute best things. (laughs) Yes, yes, our (laughs) favorites. Yes, that's what we do. So I think the first thing we each want to do is just take a moment and say what were what our takeaways were you know what are some things that we pulled from um the chapters that kind of resonated with us so marcia why don't you take it away what were what what resonated for you all right well i I think i'll start with uh the anti-cancer foods chapter and then let you talk about that and then we can move into the the body just so that we kind of stick with foods and then movement for a bit if that's okay i love it Um, let's do it Chapter seven was the anti-cancer foods and we, you know, if you haven't watched our videos, you should watch it because Amy and I just light up when we talk about food. Um, I I think my biggest takeaway from it is reinforcing that knowledge that what we're putting into our body is building our terrain and it is absolutely going to, um, can help you deal with chronic disease or prevent chronic disease in specific we're talking about cancer but it's about food as medicine and i've always really believed that what we put in our body is so important but it's just that really great reminder and real examples of how that food can affect the body i know um, as far as specific things that I took away, we talked about this earlier, is, is just adding more green tea because, you know, I'm not much of a tea drinker. I don't, in general, like hot drinks, but I have found my way to incorporate. I make my tea and then I just kind of let it go to room temperature and I drink it and, and that's wonderful and I love it. So I'm trying to do that most days. I'm not good. I know you probably do it every day and I'm not there yet, but I'm taking my baby steps. And then the other big takeaway for a specific food for me from the chapter was the mushrooms and trying to get more of the types of mushrooms specific because I I went from not liking mushrooms about five years ago to liking them, but then now I'm really trying to search for you know, the shiitakes and the, the other ones that they were talking about actually enhance immune system. So that was a big one for me. And then the final one that I didn't know, I knew turmeric was good for joints and good for a a lot of things. But what I didn't know, and I did learn from this book was that the turmeric has to be mixed with the black pepper. And so we, you know, it's a joke of the house, every, (laughs) almost every meal, or at least one meal a day, we're getting our turmeric and putting it in the olive oil or the avocado oil and adding the black pepper and either marinating or just making that part of a sauce or or something. So those were my biggest takeaways from the food chapter. What about you? I love it. I love it. So we're kind of like um, totally on the same page with all this. So again, just the idea of food as medicine and that you do have control over what you put in your body and you get to make that decision for yourself multiple times a day. So you get to decide, you know, am I going to put something in my body that nourishes my body or am I going to put something in my body that maybe is less than optimal? And you get to make that decision for yourself. I mean, I put stuff in my body that's left up less than optimal from time to time. I am not a saint by any stretch of the imagination. We do that. Sometimes it's pizza night. Okay. So just going to throw that out there. Well, sometimes have to you're do- going to Austin for the weekend. And you need to eat food because Austin has amazing food. So you just go and eat and you enjoy it and say, thank you. You know, my body use what you can out of it. Right. So it, it is really just a matter of doing the very best you can. But I love also that you brought up the terrain again, because the terrain of course is so important and you know how you're nourishing that soil and what you're giving to that soil to make things grow appropriately and so we're growing things they're growing the nutrients instead of the weeds so that's what we kind of want out of that so I love the food as medicine just like you I think it's so so critical so the foods again we're almost identical 
So the green tea, I, I try to do that every afternoon. I don't get it every day, but I do it. No, I'm surprised. Oh, I know, but I do it more often than I don't. So I think that's probably a good place to start too. So green tea in the afternoons, especially when I'm working, I'll, I'll do green tea instead of grabbing a coffee in the afternoon if I need something warm. And then um, the turmeric is almost every single day. It's in something. And, to, and remembering to put even the fat with it too, which I always forget. It's like I knew the pepper part, but then I would forget the fat part that you kind of That's funny because I, I was know. the opposite. I know. I, was, so, I knew the oil, but I didn't know the pepper. I know. It's so funny. So it was kind of like perfect. I'm like, oh, I, I didn't really realize how important the fat was. It usually just ends up that way because of whatever I'm cooking or if I'm making the golden milk, which has the coconut oil or MCT oil in it right. anyway. So you kind of was already doing it, just didn't realize the importance of it. So those two things, as far as the food goes, were my big takeaways. And I love those two specifically because they're simple and you can easily yeah. incorporate them every single day. It's not something you really have to go out of your way to do. Well, and, and that kind of brings me, I forgot that, but that was one of the big takeaways that I got from the chapter for me is that a lot of the things were very simple. You yeah. know, I eat berries and I do it anyway. A lot of people eat berries and you're doing something great for your body. So some people are already doing things that they didn't even know. And yep. there were a lot of very simple things to incorporate from the food. So if you haven't already read the chapter, watched our videos or something like that from that chapter, there was a lot of good uh, food information. Yeah, it was awesome. Cool. Uh, yeah. Is that it for the, your takeaway from the no, book? Those are my big takeaways. I'm keeping it simple today. So those are my big awesome. takeaways. All right, so let's move real quickly to the movement chapter, which was chapter 11. Yes? Yes, chapter 11. I know, I don't have the book in front of me. I'm so terrible. <laughs> I don't either. Um, but the other chapter that Amy and I reviewed was the anti-cancer um, body. And of course, that's my other big passion. That's actually where I started when I got into this uh, industry of, of wellness. I started out as an audiologist, and when I shifted, I started with movement. I became a trainer first. Um, and one thing people, people maybe have this notion that I have my entire life just always been a fitness guru. And I wasn't, I started from scratch at one point, And that was about three years after my daughter was born and she was starting to go to preschool. And I, I had quit working as an audiologist at that time to be home with my children. And I just started scheduling in times to to move <laughs> you little baby girl <laughs> i was like what's she doing <laughs> sorry <laughs> no worries you were just <laughs> um, but anyway that that um the chapter in and of itself was just talking about movement in general i think it talked about touch and the importance of that and and massage or that kind of thing which i know is big and important and I'm not very good at that so that is one thing that I'm trying to incorporate better because I'm not very good about the recovery side of things um, I love that it talked about all of the different things that movement does for you is it kind of helps reduce fat which is the toxic waste site of the body so um, you know that was a big takeaway and you know just kind of having better morale as you move it's it's kind of hard to think real negative thoughts when you're moving and, and doing something, especially if you find an activity you enjoy. So um, I think it was a great chapter that kind of summed up, I'm looking at my notes over here, summed up um, why it's important to move and then different reasons on, or, or not reasons, but different ideas of how to get going. So they were, they were things that I tell people, begin slowly, work on something even first and then you know join a group have an accountability partner have fun with it and then figuring out your right dosage so we'll talk more about that but that was kind of my recap from the chapter awesome can you hear my dog like the whole time oh my gosh I don't know what this she's just like staring at me making these all these noises so I'm sorry to everybody out in the Mama. land of watching she's just not happy with me sitting over here at the table I guess you are not paying attention to her <laughs> no she's not getting enough attention okay she got up so maybe she'll stop for a little bit yes I, I love that and I love that you bring up the 
you know, the rest, the whole rest side and how critical that is. And, Mm -hmm. you know, that that's kind of your challenge. So mine is actually kind of the opposite. So (laughs) my challenge is more actually getting moving. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit, but it's because of a, of an illness that I've had for a couple of years. And so it makes it a little bit more difficult for me to like push myself because I have that concern about, kind of going backwards and not feeling well. Um, so I'm really good about the rest side. You know, I, I really pay attention to what my body's telling me on a daily basis and how important it is that when my body says I need to lay down and rest or even just sit down and rest, it's not lay down too much anymore, thankfully, but that I I'd sit down and rest and I take a break and um, be okay with that. And that can yeah. be really hard when you're used to being able to go, go, go and do whatever you want to just when your body says no and you have to, you know, take that time to just chill out and let it reset and then you can, you know, get up and move again. So for me, it just the impo- it was a good reminder in that chapter the importance of moving my body every day, even though I don't always feel like it, and that it doesn't have to be necessarily something really intense. It just needs to be up and moving around and getting getting my body going and getting it moving, and that is also good for recovery. You know, just even the little movements, even the little getting up and moving around with when you have something going on is actually good for the recovery process as well. Right. And, and I think, uh, I think we talked about it in our video is kind of that energy creates energy concept. And I I actually have two very close friends battling cancer right now. And, and one in particular, I've talked to quite a bit, you know, she's like, I just don't feel like moving and she's tired and she has all of these energy issues, but I've tried to encourage her. I know you don't feel like moving, but if you stay stagnant, you're just going to feel more and more tired. And I know it's hard and you hit it on the nail on the head when you said, you know, moving even when you don't want to. Um, And it does, we're not talking about crazy intense things, especially if you're recovering or fighting something currently, but yeah. So we'll, we'll definitely talk about that. Um, So those were our takeaways from the chapter and um, what we like to do. I uh, don't know how many of you watching were actually at our live event, which I was not at. I got my own taste or I am currently going through my own taste of having to listen to my body and not move (laughs) as much as I want to um, due to being out from a procedure that I had done last week. Um, But Amy, so wonderfully took over (laughs) had to cancel last minute and she has this wonderful tracker do you have that in front of you I only have I do yep we'll see if we can Show see that. you can let me know if you can see that okay yep so that we can see kind of the top hot half of that or the I guess I don't know if that was the top or the bottom but that's <laughs> the tracker the other half do you have the half that explains the I do and rest? Yeah. so the other part of this document Go up a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. One more. Keep going. Keep going. And there you go. Beautiful. So you can pull it down. (laughs) Um, So this is a tracker that Amy created. And if you are part of our close Facebook group, which I really hope you are, that is in the file section. And so you have access to this tracker. And what we'd like to do right now is to talk about this tracker because it's a wonderful, wonderful simple tool that you can use um, and it's talking about nourishing the body moving the body and it also incorporates rest in this tracker which isn't part of the two chapters that we reviewed but we are going to talk about it a little bit today Um, so this tracker is very general Um, if you remember what Amy showed us the first time it's just basically on Sunday Did I move my body? Did I nourish my body? Did I rest my body? And you can check yes or not check it. You leave it blank. And at the, after you've got those for all day, Sunday through Saturday, and after Saturday occurs, you can go look back and see, you know, I five times out of seven moved my body this week and I six out of seven days nourished my body and I three out of seven days rested my body in the way that I was intending to do. And so it gives you a way to track, are you doing the things that you want to do? Um, But it's also very, very general. It's a very general thing. So if you say, well, did I move my body? What does that mean? And that's going to mean something very different for Amy, who's dealing with a chronic issue that she's 
dealt with, or for me who constantly is moving, but this week I haven't been able to, or for someone else who's completely healthy and normal at the current moment, or for someone else who's battling something. So did I move my body is a general question. And we're going to talk a little bit about how to make that a little bit more concise for you. Same thing with nourish my body. That can mean so many things. It can mean that I had a perfect day, just like a perfect game in baseball, or it can mean that you just at least one meal a day, or I mean, it can mean a lot of things. And it, it may mean that it won't, isn't even the whole meal was a perfect meal, but that you added one good thing to that meal. It, it can mean so many different things. Um, and then the same thing with rest, your body. I mean, it seems simple. Either I slept for eight hours or I didn't, but it's really not that simple because um, some people can lay in bed for eight hours a day and they are really not resting. So um, that was kind of my long-winded <laughs> it was perfect talk about it was perfect. what we were going to do with this tracker do you have anything to add um about how what we're going to talk about here that was perfect yep we're just going to kind of break it down for you what you can kind of think about as you go through each one and as you check them up and you can also write down next to it what you did to move that day what you did to nourish or rest your body that day and we're going to just going to kind of go through how to incorporate this into your week Okay, and we're gonna keep this brief here in this video. We've already taken up about 15 minutes of your time, I think, but so we'll spend another five or 10 minutes talking about this and then we'll go. But if you need help with something like this, both Amy and I, these, these are the types of things we both do in our business. This is actually exactly what I do in my business. So I'm coaching people to figure out what their next action step is for movement or for nourishment or for just wellness in general, and then we, track it somehow and so i mean this literally is what i do now of course i guide people week by week or every two weeks or or whatever i need to do whereas this you can try and do this on your own or whatever but if you need more specific help on how to deal with this you know i know i do consultations i'll do one for free and then we can figure out do you need to do more or can you go on your own that kind of thing so um i guess we'll start with the well, let's start with the move because it's the okay. first one on the tracker. Perfect. Um, and we just were talking about movements in the track uh, um, in the book. But um, if you look, if, if you do download this and you look at move, I wish the first question was actually, do you move your body? Because that's the first thing you have to decide yeah. is, are you currently moving your body? Now, everyone moves a, a slight amount. I mean, you get up and you go to the bathroom, <laughs> you're probably finding some way to get food. You may have to walk to your car. So everyone moves some, almost everyone, unless you're bedridden for some reason. But are you, do you move your body for intentional purposes is the first thing you have to ask yourself. And if you're not moving other than to do your daily routine, then your answer might currently be no. Um, on the flip side, if you're doing a little bit more, if you're cleaning your house, if you're keeping your office tidy in your work day, if you're doing other things, you might be adding movement. It's not necessarily intentional, but you might be doing more than the bare minimum. And then if you're actually scheduling time to do any form of activity outside of normal daily routine, then that's another level. So you've got to decide if you're moving and then figure out how. So Amy, I'm going to let you talk about this here for a second because my job, what I do, I'm constantly moving. I, I train people. So I'm on my feet. I am, you know, chasing after two kids. I'm cleaning my house. I'm most of my days are constant movement, but you have a little bit more of a normal schedule. So I'm going to let you talk about this for a minute, how you think about moving your body. Yeah. So with my job, I'm doing consulting one-on-one -on -one usually. So it's in an office, sitting down face to face with someone. And then of course, sitting at a desk, you know, most days for, you know, sometimes multiple hours a day, just depending on what my schedule looks like. So part of the intentional um, movement during the day is that I get up, make myself get up at least once or twice per hour and move, whether that's just walking out into the other part of the office, I'm going to the bathroom, I'm going to get something to drink. I'm getting up every hour. Because, and if I spill myself, I'm like, okay, I've been sitting there, whatever, doing 
doing some work, doing a class, whatever it might be, making myself get up. That's really, really critical. And then the, um, for scheduled time for me, um, because I've dealt with some chronic um, illness issues, I can't do quite as much as what I used to do. So I used to do yoga five to six days a week. I was either teaching it or actually doing yoga. So I had a really strong practice. And so I was very, very active and had scheduled time many days a week. Now, because I'm not able to do that, I have two scheduled days of 30 minutes that I do this Tuesday and Thursday mornings. And sometimes I can do a 30 minute actual flow class and sometimes I can just stretch. So it just depends what my body's seeing that day but I do now have two intentional days scheduled and kind of going back to what we were discussing that energy creates energy and that even when you're not feeling well you have to move your body part of my recovery process I had to do physical therapy for some vertigo issues I had to move constantly I had to be up and moving in order to just retrain my body how to function properly so movement was really critical but during the work week because I know a lot of you out there might be sitting at a desk you have to get yourself up at least once or twice an hour if you can get up every 15 to 20 minutes that's even better um, I've gone as far as uh, scheduling a timer to go off every 15 to 20 minutes on my phone or computer or whatever it needed to be if I was really into something and just needed that reminder to even just stand up even just standing up and stretching um, you know doing a couple of squats you know just kind of stretching from side to side that counts that does help just to reset that metabolic process so you're not just constantly sitting all day long so those um, are kind of the things that I do when I'm at work to just get myself up. I was going to ask you, I'm glad you brought that up. I was going to ask you, it seems like it's kind of normal and natural for you to just get up on a regular basis. But for some people, I know um, my husband, he works from home and he's at that desk all yeah. the time. And, you know, some people, it's just not natural to think, oh, I should get up and I should walk around you know, <laughs> in my space yeah. wherever I'm at. And so setting a timer for once every hour or once every half hour, or once every two hours, even if you don't feel like you can commit to every hour, whatever it is, but having something go off. I mean, I know a lot of Fitbits now, the, they have a thing where if you've been sitting sedentary for, you set it for X number of time, it'll buzz at you until you get up and do something. And like you said, it counts. It does the stretch, you know, just bouncing up and down on the toes to kind of get the body, <laughs> get the blood <laughs> pumping. Something. Yes. Get opening some up. I always going. encourage yeah. people this opening up because we sit like we this get, all yes. the time and just getting that stretch. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a good thing. So um, I highly encourage, as far as the tracker is going, what I would encourage people to do is on, um, you know, say you're, if you're going to start doing right now, I think the tracker is Sunday through Saturday. So sometime on Saturday, I would highly recommend you update what you're going to track. So it may not be the same thing every day. If you work a regular eight to five or nine to five job, Monday through Friday, on Monday, did I move my body might simply be that every hour an alarm goes off and I get up. But then on Saturday, what you might want to track is I'm going to go for a 15 minute walk in my neighborhood, or I'm going to go, you know, dribble the ball around with my son for 15 minutes or, or whatever. It doesn't have to be an exercise routine. It doesn't have to be a gym. It doesn't have to be weights, um, but it could just be that. And then on Sunday, I'm going to do a different kind of movement. I'm going to um, maybe do a 15 minute stretching sequence. Uh, so you can create this to be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be the same thing every day, or it can. It can be that I'm going to go for a walk or just do some type of scheduled movement five days out of seven days. Your goal doesn't have to be seven out of seven. Um, but if you want it to be seven out of seven, be realistic with it. Some days might just be getting up during my work day. Some days might be intentional movement, but just you decide where, where am I now and what's the next little step that I can take. And you can change this tracker week to week, but I highly encourage you to be intentional about what you intend to do for your movement. Um, so that that would be my in, you know advice on how to use this tracker. Any any other opinions, comments on that's movement? exactly it. Nope, that's perfect. Yeah, awesome. Um, and of course, if you need some help trying to figure out what your next step is, again, that's what 
I do. <laughs> so I'm happy to talk with anyone that wants a little bit of guidance on, on how to start getting the body moving. Um, so we'll move on to how to, you know, did I nourish my body? Now, um, this is the one that I do, well, both this one and the rest is the one that I do encourage you to shoot for seven out of seven. Um, you know, movement, seven out of seven, if you're being realistic with, you know, some days it's simply walking a couple of times during my work day or, or whatever. So seven out of seven is great, but make sure you're realistic with the movement. Don't be like, I'm going to do seven hardcore workouts in seven days. Um, but nourish, I highly encourage people to, you know, pick one thing that you're going to try and do every day. So before we got on this video, Amy and I were talking a little bit about that, and I'm going to let her take over in a second about different things that she does. But um, I have kind of a list here of things that I either do myself or I try to help take clients through a lot of just different tips on how you can use Nourish Body. And I certainly don't expect or even think anyone should try and do all of this list every day of the week right from the get-go. But some things that are very important to me is making sure that I'm eating slowly and mindfully. That is tip number one that I start with all of my nutrition clients with is that if you are not eating slowly and if you're not very mindful about the process of eating, I'm not talking about what you're eating at all. You can be eating like my son, Whataburger every day. Oh, God help me. <laughs> But if you're not doing it slowly and mindfully, then that's, that's trick number one, that even if you can't control what you're eating for some reason, say you're traveling or doing whatever, slowly and mindful eating is number one. So a lot of clients, that's where I tell them to start with, just work on, on that. Do I have... <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> creeping behind me and he's laughing <laughs> see he's moving his body he's getting up um then the next thing is kind of working on learning your hunger cues so again before i ever start getting somebody to talk about what they're eating we're going to go to let's eat to 80 percent full or i, I use 80 percent full for people that are trying to achieve weight loss for sure maybe 100 percent full if you're just trying to maintain but the only way to do that is to learn your body cues you know am i actually hungry am i not hungry you know do you even know if you're hungry or not and that's one thing i'm working on with my daughter right now it's very interesting she just recently got very interested in learning about nutrition so we've been working on that. She's like, I don't know if I'm hungry. Well, that's a problem. We need to know if we're hungry or not. Um, learning about the different macros. So you need fats, you need proteins, you need um, carbs, smart carbs as we call them. And then um, it's not really a macro, but in my world it is veggies is kind of our fourth macro. Uh, and learning about what those are and what really makes a carb a smart carb versus makes a carb a bad carb. So that's something you can do you can track any one of those things um, one at a time preferably um, focusing on whole foods learning how to actually shop for whole foods and i think a lot of us have always heard the the you know shop the perimeter of the grocery store well that's a really simple concept but it's not as easy as most people think i mean we go into these other aisles for little things and it's about substituting Process, you know, whole foods for processed foods. And so that's something that you can work on as far as tracking. It's uh, what we talked about a little bit earlier. And then the last thing you can track is just actually taking the time to plan and prepare. So if you're tracking, did I plan my meals for today? You'd be surprised how much better you might actually eat. And all you're doing is tracking if you planned, not if you ate better or not. So those are some of my big takeaways when I'm trying to figure out if I nourished my body. Um, so one thing you can expand on that, that as you'd like, but what I'd like for you to talk about is some of the things that you do to keep track. So if you were going to use this tracker, you know, is there something specific you would put for each day? Um, and the only other thing I want to say before I pass it back over to Amy is, is that with this habit, unlike the move habit, I feel like it's generally most successful if you take a week and focus on just one thing. So if you decide that you're going to focus on nourishing my body by eating mindfully, 
do that every day for at least a week. You might decide you need two or three weeks on that habit, but I would say just stick with it until it becomes a habit as opposed to trying to just, you know, work on eating mindfully one day, then eating slowly or uh, to 80% full the next day, like pick one thing and work on it for at least one week. So I'm going to let you kind of weigh in on how you feel about what I just said. And then some of the things that you do to track in general. Yes, absolutely. You need to pick one thing and kind of stick with it for each of these sections. And once, it, like we're saying, we're, we're trying to build new habits by using a tracker. So we're not just trying to check off a list. We're trying to build something into your day-to-day -day life that's functional for you, that starts to get you um, tuned into your body and tuned into the cues that your body is giving you. And I think definitely one of the number ones is paying attention to when you're hungry or not. Absolutely. If you don't recognize when you're hungry, if you're eating on autopilot, if you're grazing all day long, if you forget to eat because you're not listening to those hunger cues, you have to start there because you have to know what your body is telling you that it needs because your body will tell you what it needs if you take the time to listen. So that's one of the number one things. Um, some things that I do in my own day to day is at all my meals, it kind of what you were talking about with the macros, fat, fiber, protein, and greens at every single meal, including breakfast. So that's one of the things that I kind of focus on as far as if I'm nourishing my body, because if I know, I know that if that I include all of those things, then I'm going to give my body what it needs to function throughout the day. If I'm, you know, skipping out or only focused on protein or only focused on fat or only focused on the, the fiber part, I'm not really getting what my body needs. My body is best with a more of a balance than it is with a one extreme or the other. I know some people do really well with the higher fiber. Some people do really well with the higher fat and that's fantastic. But for me, it's the balance is actually much better for me. I feel better when I do that. So that's number one. Paying, when I get the impulse to eat, like my body's saying, I'm hungry, I stop what I'm doing and I actually eat, whether I've got something to snack on or it's just time for lunch. Even if I'm in the middle of working on something, I will stop and eat because once I let my body get past that point, then it's I'm putting myself in a stress state because my body is telling me that it's time I need to put something into my mouth. I know there obviously there's going to be times where that's just not an option, but the majority of the time it is an option and it's just my choice to stop and eat mm -hmm. something. So I choose to listen to that impulse pulse and stop and eat because then you don't get to that blood sugar going all over the place. You don't get hangry. <laughs> yeah. Like you're going to gnaw your arm off. So listening to that impulse to eat and actually stopping and doing it is another thing that I do throughout the day that I, I have found really helps with blood sugar regulation. I'm really glad you brought that up um, because I hear that a lot. Uh, I fight with my husband on that all the time. You know, I'm, I'm in the middle of something I can't yeah. stop. And you know, I, I don't know exactly what he does on a day to day basis or, you know, how hard it is, but especially even working from home, like, you know, I, I can slip a banana to you. I can, you know, I mean, or you can come and run in here and, and it, we get in this mindset that we just can't stop at what we're doing, but you know what, you're probably going to do it a lot more effectively and a lot quicker if you just take a few seconds, go grab yourself a snack. And then it goes back to that preparing, making sure you have good health, wholesome snacks or, or meals ready to go. So this is a hard one for us to do here in this video. And I know we've taken up a lot of time talking about this, but um, if, you, if you want some assistance trying to figure out something to do, then certainly reach out to Amy or I. Um, but the main thing I would say is, is most of us have up in here a list of things that we might want to do better as far as eating. One thing you talked about is, is just start with eating whole foods at at least one meal a day. So start with breakfast, make sure you're not eating a box cereal, make sure you're not just picking up a, a pastry or something like that. And, and make sure that you start with one meal a day if it can't every meal. So what's one little thing you can do to increase the quality of what's being put in your body. And don't worry about going all out and making sure that every meal, um, another thing that Amy mentioned was just cooking at home more. So if you are the type of person that eats out 15 times a week, take it back to 14, you yeah. know? It doesn't yeah. seem like that's gonna make a difference, but it will, and then next week or two weeks from now, once you get used to whatever that one meal is that you brought to home or from prepared at home and taking with you to work or, or however you do that, um, you know, go down to 13 meals that you're, so just 
take one step, pick one little thing that you can do, you know, incorporate one extra servings of vegetables into your day, whether it's at breakfast, lunch, or dinner. If you're used to eating only one servings of vegetables a day, which I have lots of clients that that's where they start, they have vegetables with dinner and that's it. And a lot of people are like, no, I eat that. for a lot of people, that's where they're starting or they're doing none. I mean, that's, that's common too. Add in one serving a day. That can be what you track. Did I nourish my body? Yes. I had one extra servings of vegetables every day this week. So pick one little thing that you can make a habit of. Like Amy said, we're trying to make this habits that we incorporate. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Anything else for nourish? I think, I think we've got everything we can get into keeping it on schedule. <laughs> All right, so we'll take just about three minutes to talk about sleep. Um, well, rest, because the last one is, did I rest my body? And it wasn't actually part of the book, but it's very, very impar- important. Um, I cannot even stress how much resting the body is important. I got a nice, nice long taste of resting my body this week. <laughs> Because I have been so tired since that procedure. Um, But resting your body again, I think I said in the beginning, it seems very simple. I'm going to sleep for eight hours a day. It's not always that simple. Before this this video, Amy and I were having a conversation and she was talking to me about her sleep. A couple of different things you can do to track your rest. You know, did you set a specific bedtime? Do you have a specific wake up time? Do you have any type of sleep ritual? And it doesn't have to be an hour long getting ready for bed process, but you know, most of us brush our teeth, maybe wash our face, um, putting electronics away, getting into that mindset of I'm going to start resting my body. Uh, Amy was telling me before that just makes her tired, just changing, shifting that mindset. And it's probably because it's now a habit for her. So her brain is, is triggered now. Um, and so it may not be that easy in the beginning, but definitely having some different things set in place. And I loved what you told me. So I'm going to pass it back over to you about what you do for, for resting the body. Sure. So, um, coming up with some sleep habits and some of those bedtime ritual routines is actually very helpful. I know it sounds really strange, but you have, especially because we're so busy all day long and we're so distracted. Um, we need something that, um, gives us a transition to sleep. Um, and we, you know, we've got, we've got artificial lighting all day long. So our brain is not getting its natural signals when the sun comes up and the sun goes down. Those are natural circadian signals that our body has, has received for, you know, generations, which we don't have anymore. So we have to create our own. So for me, first of all, I go to bed pretty much the same time every night and get up at the same time every, every single day. I would say 95% of the time, of course, there's times when we're going out with friends or something. So we're going to stay up a little bit later, but I am in bed between nine 30 and 10 every single night. And so I'm usually asleep within about 30 minutes of, of getting into bed. And then I wake up between six 30 and seven every single day. Eat yes. Even on the weekends. So I don't do the sleep. In. I don't even think I could sleep in if I wanted to now, cause it's my body's yeah. so used to getting up. I could, I don't even think I could sleep past that. And my dog won't let me anyway. So, so those are non-negotiables for me because I know for myself that if I do not get a good night's sleep, I am worthless the next day. It just, I, it really is very detrimental for me. So those are non-negotiables. So getting ready for bed in that nine to nine 30 range, since again, I want to be in bed between nine 30 and 10. 9 to 9.30, it's get up and go plug my phone in away from me so I can't just continue to pick it up 500 times. Um, If the TV's on and my husband, it's something my husband wants to watch, but I know that I need to start getting to bed, I'll just shift my body and turn it away from the TV so I'm not staring directly at it. Even that starts to make a difference. And then one of the things that Marcia said is I start to shift my mindset that it's time to go to bed. So I'm actually start thinking about going to bed. Um, You know, if I'm working on something, I put that away. If I'm reading something, I put that away. It's time for my, for me to just start relaxing and calming the brain down to go to sleep. So those are some of the things that I do to just just get ready for bed and it's not complicated I don't have some you know like a tea at this time and then brush my teeth I don't do that so it's just the really simple cue that I've begun to build in that help me get sleepy and so my body knows okay it's time for me to go to bed yeah, and I love that mindset thing because I gotta I gotta admit I'm probably guilty of just I, I I have a set 
bedtime and a wake up time. And I kind of do that. And I have, you know, my, it's not a big ritual, but you know, the brush the teeth, wash the face and that triggers my brain to know, but I, I've got to admit, I've never actively made that mind shift set. You know, I put the electronics away. I do certain things, but I think that would be something that I would like to try is really just actually thinking about that, not just automatically doing the things yeah. that I do to go to bed, but actually thinking this is my time to rest my body and being like I talked about in the beginning with the movement being or, or the ner- uh, food, whatever, <laughs> my brain, whatever so. we were talking about, <laughs> but, but being more actually mindful about this is what I'm currently doing. So, you know, getting the electronics away, the lighting different, all of those things are things that maybe happen, but I don't actually think about that. And so right. that's something I'm going to add in. Yeah. Um, it's been, thank you for that. it's been interesting how that has actually really made a difference. I imagine. Another thing that I, I was watching, I don't remember if it was an article I was reading or a video that I was watching, but it, it was a, it was a, actually in the, um, a documentary series that's about to start here shortly. The human longevity series, it's a free documentary, nine day series. It's excellent. And the sleep one was phenomenal. I learned so much, but they, somebody was discussing, thinking about going to sleep as the beginning of your day instead of the end of your day. Because if you think about that as the beginning of your day and that it sets you up for the end of your day, that that even that mind shift makes a big difference because it's not like you're falling into the bed, it's the end of the day and you're just exhausted. It's like, I'm going to bed because it's the beginning of my day to set me up for the rest of my day. That's, I thought that was really cool. That is really cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, really wow. different yeah. way of looking at it. And it's not something, it's something that's just playing around in my brain. It's not something that I'm actually doing yet, but I found that to be a really great concept. So it's oh, something God. I'm working on. I love that. Yeah. All right. Well, let's uh, wrap this up, I guess, because I know this is going to be a <laughs> long video for you guys, but it's a lot of good information. Yeah. So hopefully you're watching this and taking some good notes and then you will reach out to us to help you as we can. So for the, did I rest my body? Pick one thing. You know, if you are the type that you just kind of fall into bed and don't even think about it, pick one thing, you know, at X time or, or, or even if you don't have, if you can't set a specific time right now, maybe that's not in your uh, rule book, but 15 minutes before you decide you're going to try and go to bed, change the lighting. That can be all you track. I'm going to turn most of my lighting, put a very soft lamp on in my environment, or I'm going to just turn electronics off and then work my way 15 minutes. So I go to pick one thing that you can do. Maybe the pick one thing is having a set bedtime and trying that for a week at, at, at 9:30 or at 10 or whatever time I'm going to lay down in bed. Uh, you know, pick one thing that you can do to promote better rest for your body. Um, and you know, track that for a week and then add something else in and add something else in and and build that. So, um, a lot of information. Uh, I, this was awesome. Thank you so much, Amy, for sharing with, with everyone, a lot of your, your tips, because I think that was great. Um, what else do we need to do? Is that, that about it? That's it. (laughs) I think we've given everyone some really great, just useful tips and information of how to use the information that we've, you know, gained from the book and to put it into your daily life, some real actionable things that are not difficult, um, that you can start doing. And I mean, if you do this tracker and keep, you know, and track some of these really simple things by the end of the month, you may have some really good habits in place, right? So, you know, that are so going to serve you from here on out. Yeah. Speaking of the end of the month, um, if you print up about four weeks worth of what Amy showed you, if you go on the Facebook page, you write in what you're going to track. Very simple. It can be a very simple thing for each of these things. Write it in for week one, track it, do that for four weeks and bring it to the live event next yes. week. Um, so we can kind of talk a little bit about, because I think we are going to maybe revisit this a little bit at the next month. We are. Okay. Yes. We are. We yes. <laughs> so bring it and track it and let us know how you're doing and, and, and what j- differences have you seen? So we're excited to see that. I hope that you guys do that for at least two or three or even four weeks till our next live event. Yes. Um, other than that, I think we're good for today. I think we're good. I think we've covered everything. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All awesome. Right. Thank you.
Thank you, Marcia. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you at the live event next month. Bye. See you next time.